Hey everybody, what's up? All right, so in this video, I want to get feedback actually from my audience and the, uh, on the current state of UI development going into 2022. And I've been a UI developer for a long time, so I've been like uh, not strictly UI. I mean, that all started with uh, regular HTML, CSS, JavaScript, jQuery, moving into really React, a little bit of Angular, Vue, stuff like that, but mostly React for the last five or six years. And uh, just simply, I'm going to comment on the latest state of UI development. So we've heard about this low code, no code stuff where like you're going to be able to be a non-coder and write complex applications somehow. Seems like a pipe dream. And we also hear that artificial intelligence is eventually going to take that job and then build the UIs for you, which is probably something that could happen if anybody did get locked into one of these tool sets. So it's a complicated mess, I think, of uh, different directions that we're sort of going into when we talk about UI development for web programmers. One of the latest things is that when uh, this product got released here just a couple of days ago, this uh, this article on TechCrunch is talking about this low-code, no-code tool that is going to be provided by Amazon AWS. So if you take a look here at some of the screenshots of these components that are being used by this low-code, no-code application, it actually derives from this project that got announced earlier this year. So Amazon they started creating a, a React UI library. And this is not something new. This is actually something that a lot of other companies have already tried to do uh, or have already done. So I went ahead and downloaded this project, which is on GitHub here. You could see that the source, if we look inside the components, everything here is written in React using TypeScript. So that's why there's TSX files here, uh, which is JSX inside TypeScript. So I went ahead and cloned the project using Visual Studio Code here. And then you, you just have to NPM install the dependencies and NPM run start if you want to see the project running. So here's an example. It's running on localhost. And you can click on any one of these components that it has. Like here's a badge component. And you can also adjust the theme. So it has built in dark mode, light mode, and dark mode, which is pretty cool. But it seems like everything is going in this direction where they're trying to provide, provide uh, already built stuff for you. And that's all well and good, but I think the biggest problem with some of these toolkits, and there's many of them, another big one is Material UI. So Material UI is a open source project here, but it gets a little bit more confusing because there's also another project that's built on top of Material UI, which they call MUI or MUI, I guess. Uh, but I think it's MUI. You can see these companies that are using it, some of the big, you know, big companies in, in the world here, but it's also the same ones that are using uh, this as well here. So a lot of these uh, same companies are mentioned. So it's a little confusing because this has a pricing model to it. So from what I understand, this toolkit does make working with React elements using Material UI a lot easier. Uh, maybe you guys can comment on that. I haven't really used this yet, but you can see that one of the promises is that you can actually make it, uh, it's a lot easier to use your own custom theme. So one of the problems with these component libraries is that they have like a look and feel to them. And if you really want to make it unique, you have to actually dive into the code to provide a custom theme. And that can be somewhat difficult depending on the library that you're using. So this is one of the pro promises of MUI to have uh, the ability to pass in a custom theme pretty easy. Now, the thing about both of these projects here is that, like I said, they do have like sort of a look and feel that's already built in. And when I look at this, like uh, with, Amazon's project here, it has a UI that's very similar to how Amazon looks and feels. And I'll be honest, I don't think that Amazon has like the best UI when it comes to e-commerce. So for instance, here's the modal component and you know, the buttons, like I'm saying, like the, it, you know, the rounded curvature buttons, the coloring, the somewhat basic text, no boldness. I, I don't know what it is, but I don't know that I like, you know, some of this styling and everything. So you can override it, but again, you have to kind of dive into the code to be able to do that for either one of these libraries. It's also worth mentioning that both of these libraries are using React, which has its own custom virtual DOM. So that's React DOM, and uh, that is a requirement. So you're sort of locking yourself into the React architecture. What is an alternative to that? It's Google's project, which is lit HTML. And this project is actually a spinoff of Google Polymer, and that project is really not around anymore, so it's just lit HTML. So the promise of lit HTML is unlike having a React dependency, this is using just straight JavaScript, and the web components are true web components, meaning that they're using the Shadow DOM, 
they're completely isolated and independent from one another. They don't rely on a React library or anything like that. Some of the information being touted by this project, uh, and this comes from Google themselves, is that Lowe's.com, a home improvement store in the United States or probably across the world, they're like probably the second or the first uh, largest, uh, in, in, at least in the United States, billion dollar company. They're doing, yeah, 90 billion. Anyway, they're using uh, lit HTML web components. So if I look at the website, I go over here, you can see like, yeah, the look and feel very similar to the Google Polymer slash lit HTML web components. And um, they are using, like I said, the shadow DOM. I think one of the interesting things too, is if I look at the page source, you can see that they're embedding a lot of the HTML, or I'm sorry, the CSS right into the head. So um, this is all probably done, obviously it's done by a tool, but they're getting performance boost by not having to have like an external CSS style sheet that they're referencing. They're just passing it down with the HTML so that there's no additional requests being made. And I'm assuming that's part of the reason why this thing is efficient, although it looks ugly. But who really cares? It's in the page source. So unless you're like a bot trying to scan some of this stuff, that is one thing I'll mention. A lot of our testing in UI is done by something called Selenium. And Selenium does not work well with web components at all uh, because of the shadow DOM. So like if there is components being rendered inside of components and they all have uh, their rendering done inside their shadow DOM, Selenium is not going to be able to click on certain buttons and things like that without using like a JavaScript shim. And that can be like really, really daunting. It's the equivalent of having to dive into like five iframes deep to uh, try to parse or click something on a web page. A big company that recently rewrote their UI using web components and also lit HTML is, uh, I believe it's lit HTML, or maybe they custom rolled their own web components, I don't remember. But it says in this article, I just don't remember. Anyway, um, GitHub recently rewrote their UI, so they're also using web components with the shadow DOM. So we're being pulled in all kinds of different directions of, of where do we want to go. Looking at this Amazon project, this is a year after the announcement from the register.com. And, you know, it's not all that impressive. It's somewhat plain and basic. And um, I, I just don't know that I would want to use this for my website. It looks okay, but you're really locking yourself into a look and feel. Another thing too is that from what I understand, Tailwind does not actually work with web components all that well by default. So that's another sort of UI library direction that we're going into with this. This is um, with Tailwind, you're using classes more than you're writing actual CSS. So again, you're sort of locking yourself into a look and feel. I think this looks okay, but it's not the best thing I've ever seen. This Daisy UI project is actually built on top of Tailwind to have better support for uh, web components. So yeah, I would say that it's still the wild west of user interface design development with programming going into 2022. I haven't even mentioned Angular or Vue, and like this is another project that's using material design with Vue. It seems like if I had to guess any sort of direction at all that most of the companies are not trying to have custom CSS. Ever since Bootstrap, it seems like we're always just relying on libraries which doesn't make a whole lot of sense considering the fact that CSS really isn't that hard to write. And um, CSS developers, for the most part, don't even make as much as other programmers. So like, why not try to just simply focus a little bit more on CSS and, and try to build something truly custom? You know, that really brings out, I think, you know, people's creativity. 